want to bring in the former co-founder of Netflix, senior executive and former Redbox uh, president, MoviePass CEO Mitch Lowe. Mitch, great to see you. Yeah, hi, Maria. Thanks. And just one correction. Yeah. Not co-founder, co-founding executive. Co-founding executive. executive. What's That's the right. difference? Uh, the difference is I didn't own 10% of the company when we started. Okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> uh, what are your expectations for Netflix, having been an insider at this company? Yeah, I think they're, they're definitely going to report on the higher end of the scale as far as new subscribers. They've hit this acceleration where people just love their Netflix and they want more of it. You've seen that with uh, raising the prices for the older customers. There's a lot of price elasticity and people just got to have more of it. I think that was interesting that the company did not lose any customers even though it raised subscription prices. Right. People are willing to pay. They want their streaming on Netflix. Right, right. Well, the Netflix, this is all about getting the right content for consumers and Netflix does a better job than almost anybody else. Now, one of the things we were talking about um, in the commercial break was about data. Mm -hmm. um, the, the original series at Netflix, obviously, really incredibly important, right. but also the data you said is scientific. Yeah. Netflix stock is 58% higher so far this year. Uh, is it possible that data helps growth? Oh, yeah. Data uh, <clears throat> allows Netflix to, to pick the right movie for the right subscriber. And so it's not guesswork. It's really getting the right uh, content. And they just get better and better at doing that. And, and you said that your company, MoviePass, is planning to make a profit by selling user data to Uber, Hollywood Studios, restaurants close to the theaters. Basically, bottom line is... You say you're not selling data, but you're using the data to inform. Right. You know, people want to go to the movies more often, but they don't want to take the risk of a bad movie. So what we do at MoviePass is we help them make a better decision as, as far as enjoying the movie. But going to the movies, there's much more to it than just going straight to the movie theater. You go to dinner, you might have drinks, you might use Uber or Lyft. So we're going to help our subscriber get to all those businesses and get discounts and benefits. And So will Uber pay for that information? Do the Hollywood restaurants, I mean, are, are they paying for that data? Uh, they will. Uh, as we drive more and more of our subscribers to their businesses, we'll take a share of the incremental profits. And how do you know where people are going after they go to the movies. Well, you know, today with your phone in your pocket, people can track pretty much where you are. You log on to Facebook, they know where you are. When you log into our app, we know where you are because we automate your uh, movie subscription by essentially what theater you're close to. Well, obviously that is valuable data, so it's, you're selling the data. I mean, that's, that's valuable. And is that what they do as well at Netflix? Well, uh, they don't sell the data. They, In the same way, they use the data to make smarter decisions of what content to acquire. That's why they can spend more money than other studios on content because they're more sure that they're going to get an ROI on that content. It's interesting because one of our panelists, Amy Holmes, earlier was asking, how, how do they know how much to invest in the next season when we're not clear about ratings? Right. How do they sell that? But you're, and you're saying it's the data. Well, it is because it's, it's so much of Hollywood is guesswork. But today, understanding what people want to see and what they're going to enjoy, much more nuanced. It's not just genre or actors. That allows you to make smarter decisions and then to invest more. You know, Netflix is going to spend two to three times more on content this coming year than all their competition. They can do that because they know what people want. That's fascinating. Yes. Right, let me get your take on the Harvey Weinstein situation that keeps unfolding. Yeah. You've been in the entertainment industry for a long time. Yeah. Now Weinstein is expected to challenge his firing. He's basically saying, I should not have been fired by the company that I founded. He's mm -hmm. going to do this tomorrow at the board of directors meeting, according to TMZ. What's your reaction to this growing scandal? You know, uh, I've always believed that if you have more diversity at the top, at the, at the senior level of these companies, these kinds of things won't happen. And if they do, they'll get stopped right away. And I think that's the problem in our entire kind of ecosystem, our whole industry, is that there's not enough women in diversity at the senior leadership level. Well, it's pretty incredible that now we're talking about the potential bankruptcy of Weinstein. We're talking yeah. about, you know, they, they don't have a lot of options. So in this business, at this point, after what we've read and what we've understood about what took place, will stars be reluctant to go there? Will, I mean, do, do you think mm. it's a real possibility given that people are shutting their doors on Weinstein Company that yeah. maybe, yeah, they, they could go bankrupt? 
Yeah, he's, you know, Weinstein has always been known for taking small titles and making them big hits, kind of discovering that great content. Right. But people will be reluctant, you know, to, to work with someone who, who is damaged, who, who probably can't succeed in getting that film seen. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Mitch, thank you so much for coming thank in you. today. Thank you. Good, good to see you. Mitch Thanks. Lowe joining us there. And we